God, Tommy? Tommy? Tommy! Oh my God, Tommy! 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 This is the best dream ever. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were dying, man! What's wrong with you? I just saw a movie and I spent t three total dollars and I thought it was a gangster flick and it wasn't. It's, okay. Well, uh, what is it? It's called American Breakdown. That's what it's called. And look at this movie. It's just, oh my gosh. Well, um, so well, maybe we should talk about what it, it's about. Yes. On um, that thing that we do call... Uh-oh! Uh -oh, movie Review! Okay, folks. I'm Tommy NC2010 and my, my lovely assistant ravishing more than ever and she makes men rise up to the occasion <laughs> crystal then i love you short crystal short. i love you short crystal i love you short more than a bottle of scotch and where are your yeah, notes never more than a bottle of scotch what me notes me notes me notes her notepad and I have to say, when I saw this movie, okay, I watched it here at my house, and we reshot this video because, uh, yeah, be honest, because we, um, we cut our heads off we the cut last our, time. We, there was 20 minutes of us basically with our heads cut off, yeah. and reacting things is actually better when you redo it, and Crystal's kind of worn out, she didn't want to do it at her house, so we brought it back here at the mobile command center, the main <laughs> base here. Tommy headquarters. So what's the name of this movie, Crystal, again? It's American Breakdown. American Breakdown. And, um, so... It's an indie film. It's, it's an, very obvious when you watch it. Very it's indie film. And it's a small-time production because every single time in every single trailer, the letter, the number four is included inside of the, uh, inside of the video. Oh, yeah, because it's like four something film productions. It's something you've never really heard of or I haven't heard and of. And every single trailer that they have is like very sappy and it's very there's no they it's like they didn't have enough time to pay a a, a, a base base like this yeah, summer yeah. this summer they prepare for an explosion in your pants beyond <laughs> proportions it's <laughs> like dante's peak exploding at its peak <laughs> you can just kind of tell that they they definitely you can see the under budget it shows okay reason but, why i say this film is a get look like a gangster film i was in the store yeah, take a look at this i'm in the i would say it looks pretty much like a gangster flick to me and and in the back and because i was in the store and i saw steve carell and i was like this is epic steve carell is a gangster or a cop and then there's james gandolfini looking also like a gangster look at yeah james okay and there's paris hilton looking like she always does <laughs> like a slut like eh, you know i know i don't know <laughs> something like that so the first the first storyline of this movie is called what is it called club soda club soda and the, basically this this guy is um, with this kid and he's teaching him. he says what do you want to be you want to be a star or do you want to be a rock star he's like no, he's like you want to be an actor or do you want to be a uh, you want to be famous and he's like well I want to be both and he's like. No man, you gotta do. You gotta live your dream. You know, don't don't get into this showbiz crap. It's not worth it. You know, I'm gonna take you into my way. I'm gonna show you what life's about. La la la. And uh, he ends up working in this bar with a bunch of guys. And after, he breaks into it. Yeah, after he breaks into the bar and he steals gets money, before. gets electrocuted by the fake CGI lightning. <laughs> and he's stealing money out of a jukebox. He literally the, gets quarters. Who? Okay, out honestly. Of a jukebox. When, if you went into a place, wouldn't you take the stuff out of the register more? There's like like a hundred bucks more in the register than there probably is in that store. I mean, I guess we jukebox. could assume that he knew the register was closed, maybe, so he went for the jukebox instead. But how many thieves actually just like <laughs> pry open? He was just a stupid kid. I don't know. The kid just just uh, and then and then there's a storm going on, so he he actually cuts a hole in the roof of the bar somehow to get and gets in and then lightning strikes the jukebox and the quarters that are around the jukebox so for the rest of the film every now and then you have these quarters that still have literally little little blue bolts of lightning going all around yes them. and look at these quarters they have not been struck by lightning but they, they, <laughs> and even if they had um i do not think they would retain that much electrical energy 
But I'm sure it was symbolic for something because it's an indie film, and there you go. But it was seriously. <laughs> That's my way of. <laughs> hey, thanks. I need That's that. That's my way of tipping, Crystal. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I tip her every single day, but she will only tip her with the other thing. Correct you are, sir. Correct you are. Because <laughs> she couldn't take that much. I don't know. That's just how me and Crystal zip off each oh, other. Oh, man. Just men. Our men. Always. <laughs> Cha-ching. <laughs> so, but what's really annoying about this perverse film is that the life lesson was kind of just a mundane, you know, don't steal, don't lie, don't take advantage of your friends. And James Gandolfini's character in the movie is actually dead, in the film, is actually dead. And so he shows himself as this, as a ghost, as an apparition to this, to this kid and kind of being his mentor. And then at the end... Kind of a smartass also. <laughs> Cigar smoking, kind of ass. gangster theming, and and only the kid can see him. It's a figment of the kid's imagination, <laughs> basically. And then at the end, the kid admits that it was him that did it, and he walks away with a copy of Shakespeare's Hamlet, and that's it. Like it's really kind of strange. So let's just pass that one because in a way it was just it was really very mediocre. The second film in the movie. It's called Street of Pain and it's got Steve Carell in it and Funny, it is our favorite one. Hilarious and it's very uh, very hilarious because the fact is the whole basis of the story is kind of like it's you expect to see guns guns blazing, blood everywhere fight. silent. It's a silent film by the way. It's a silent film. There's some sounds just by the people, you know, when he's clapping. Yeah, there's really just music and sound effects and that's it. And uh, at the beginning, you see these three guys that are like, uh, you know, card sharks, and they're like taking people's money and cheating, playing cards, and blah blah blah. And then Steve Carell walks by in his suit and tie and just um, looks funny. Fedora, and he just looks funny just because he's Steve Carell. Yeah, he's, it's already comical just because he's there. And uh, so he apparently these three guys bullied picked, him, bullied him when he was a kid, threw like a dodgeball at him and knocked him down and whatever. So there he's walking in the street, and here is like there's like a toy store, there's a school bus, and then there's this giant crate of dodgeballs <laughs> that are just sitting on the street. Surprisingly, in quotations, in quotations, gigantic case of dodgeballs at a school ground, and not even a school ground. I was on the street. It was on the street next to a school. That's where it kind of we have to assume. And right behind Steve Carell is a toy store, Toys R Us, I think. A little miniature version of Toys R Us. Uh -huh. And it's just like, oh. So Steve Carell, he picks up a ball out of this crate to throw it at the guys to start this fight, which would normally be with guns. And the guy yanks the it, guy back, luckily. Who happens to be Cam from Modern Family, also. Hi. <laughs> I like dressing up as clowns. <laughs> yes, he dresses up like clowns. He, he dresses up like clowns. <laughs> So he jerks the guy out of the way to keep him from hitting, getting hit, and the ball hits the cement wall behind him and it creates Breaks this the wall. dent, which is just so funny. So the, the whole thing is basically just silent film, dodgeball warfare, Matrix style moves, and Steve Steve Carell is doing like these jumps and somersaults and crazy antics to avoid getting hit by the balls, and his hat and tie. Literally never move. And for instance, look at that. I just moved my head real fast and my fedora came off. So unless they superimposed his hat onto his head. Or they just glued it. Or they I just, just I feel it. sorry. Poor Carell. Well, he has had his hair ripped out of his chest. What? Via oh, yeah, the four-year-old virgin. virgin. So that one was just really, really funny. and it, 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 But the end was kind of sad because he does lose the, the dodgeball fight. Spoiler alert. If you ever <laughs> see this movie, and if you want to spend the time but to it's watch still this hilarious. movie. It's still just really great. And it's, it's don't just lighthearted. Please don't want this Yeah. Yeah, if you see American Breakdown, it doesn't. it's not anything what it looks like. No. No, it's not. So the, the third installment was called Member, and it was um, Josh Hartnett. And the this entire this in, the entire installment of the movie is. Um, I want to thank you for my penis. Basically, and being well, white. hold on a second ourselves. But yeah, the, there's a kid at the beginning of this that's praying, and his prayer literally he says, 
Thank you, God, for my penis. Thank you, God, for making me white. Thank you, God, for TV. And Which, wrestling. He mentions, it also and shows Nintendo. And Yeah, well, Nintendo 64 specifically, which is kind of funny. Um, but I guess that was, this one was kind of interesting because Josh Hartnett is clearly hopped up on some crazy drugs and he is absolutely rambling on and on while driving a car about just what I got from it was it's just sort of this artsy fartsy way of saying that people generally are driven, you know, by possessions and vanity, uh, a fear of, of dying or a fear of not doing enough before we die, drugs, sex, and and basically kind of highlighting that we exist within this capitalistic society that's greedy and shallow and is sinking fast. Yeah. And the whole feel feel of this particular one is his character is both arrogant and panicked at the same time. Like, he's like trying to be sure of himself, but at the same time he's doubting himself. And it's very hectic, a lot of colors. Very hateful. And he's like, up super yours verbose. Old, and, up yours, old man, you know. Oh. Yeah, he's yelling at some car that you don't see next to him. And there's a, at one point he has a dead guy in his back seat. And he pushes him out. And there's a don't Buddha. Know how that happened. There's a video of a Buddha. And. And there's this one girl trying to have sex with these guys, and then all of a sudden you see a mouse, and it moves like it's like, it like it reminded me of a green screen effect. I I just realized that because then mm -hmm. you, you don't I don't know if did you see the part where the mouse came in and just took the people out. It was like video effects, and it see kinda, it's kind of hard to see. you have to watch that one a couple of times to get all the detail out of it because it was really moving fast. Yes, and kind of like, like if you were like hopped up on cocaine or something. Have you ever watched the television when people that probably don't have a lot of money have those televisions with the animal and the antennas, the... Right, right, the rabbit ears. And you're basically sitting there, if you're a cokehead or something like that, or a weed head, you know, you're sitting there, you're, you're seeing images and things are popping on at you. It's kind of like you fix the antennas and you can see what he, this guy is talking. It's like, yeah, it's I saw a boo. I saw a boo real quickly. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, it was really, that. well, yeah, it was kind of like that it was flashes of images, um, just very seeming almost random, but it, there was also sort of a feeling of, um, an illusion of freedom and understanding that we feel drugs offer, and maybe, sometimes they do, maybe they don't, but they, they definitely change the way we feel about reality, but they don't change reality itself. Which is what I got from that particular segment. And it was kind of cool, and Josh Hartnett's hot, so, you know, whatever. Even when he's high on cocaine, then yeah. it looks like he's on a particular drug. Who wants to be trapped in a room with Josh Hartnett hooked off on cocaine? Not me. I do! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Figures, you're a woman, but she wouldn't be, she wouldn't be one trapped in a room with me, because I'm not hot enough, apparently. Um, I didn't say, uh, I said specifically Josh Hartnett. What's what's it? Well, okay, well, okay. The question is, what's the difference between Josh Hart and me? <laughs> she's not, she's trying not to be rude, but you know. We'll let the viewers say what they think about that one. That'll be fun. <laughs> oh, so, a lot of rude comments right there. <laughs> he sucks. He's a dickhead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eh, posh. Screw posh. you. Posh. So the fourth video in the movie is called Life Makes Sense When You're Famous, and it's really short, and it really gets to the point, which is not a particularly <clears throat> difficult point. I think it's actually a moot point at this point. I think I just said point four times. Five point, times. Point, 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 point. In two sentences. So, Life Makes Sense When You're Famous starts out with this guy who is just some, he's a small town from Minnesota, and he's, he's watching these, either these Rich guys, famous guys, whatever, they're trying to get into a club, the bouncer's not I'll sue in. you, you'll be fired tomorrow. And the, yeah, the guy who thinks he's somebody's like, yeah, I'm gonna have your job. And, and he's sort of over here just watching this happen. He says, I'm from a small town and we just ice fish. Yeah, he's like, I'm from a small town in Minnesota. We yeah, ice fish, fish there. And so it kind of segues into him his being small little dinky house and he basically tiny. gets on his Segway and. It's not a Segway, it's a motorized scooter. It's literally like a 
just, it's not even a scooter that you sit on. It's a motorized scooter that you stand on. And he's like, he's driving home with the putts, in my opinion. And the nice guy is driving, and this super rich girl is he's like, not paying attention <coughs> in the dark. And then he wake up or whatever. Boom. Hits him. And she's just like, ugh. Uh, yeah, I, she's just annoyed. Like, she's inconvenienced. And she's kind of like, I can't, you keep got blood on my car. Her, her attitude is like, oh, I have a suspended license, and you can't call the cops or the ambulance because I'll be in such trouble. And anyway, so he gets in the car with her. She takes him to his her place. And this is just huge mansion. And her cousin is there with her, who is also some big famous actor. And the guy who got his head hits kind of like starstruck. He's like, oh my god, you're so-and-so. Oh my god, you're so-and-so. And he's kind of like being a cheese ball about it. Like, you know, and the guy's like, yeah, whatever, dude. Catch you later. Peace out. And the end of the last thing that he says is the, right, the main character is like, man, these people just don't have a clue. And it's just basically saying that people who are rich just don't know, have a clue of how basically you can survive paycheck by paycheck. They just are given money and they just they earn that money, but then it just gets their head. When Not all of them do. I know some rich people. I know some very rich Most people. Most rich people, I think, do earn it. Well, the fact is, I know some rich people that are very kind and they would practically open their doors to you. And uh, sure, yeah, me too, me too. But I guess it was kind of like um, the kind of fame and fortune that you like the Kardashians type of thing like they're just pretty faces and they, they just have a lot of somebody's money vagina. and they they like to throw it around and have you know fancy chandeliers and big pools and mansions that they don't need and that was basically it yeah. I mean it was it was fine but it didn't really say much it wasn't very poignant the fifth one yes it's called LA Nights and that was the one that paired and it was L.A. Knights spelled K-N-I-G-H-T-S. Can I say something real quickly? L.A. Knights just gave me this feeling of this, this, girls that are, there's this one girl that is just totally, is just this normal girl and she just got out of a bad relationship. And she's looking for love. You know, she wants love. More love, than love more than that, but, it's, but she's with these girls that are just totally... Drifters, like they they hung out, they hang out with boys, sponsor drinks, and they yeah, they're not, well, they're not necessarily drifters, but they are super typical like scene girls where they just they glorify, you know, they're glorifying sex and partying and drugs, and they refer to the men at the bar as um, as drink sponsors, so they just go around flirting, getting laid, and having drinks, you know, whatever, snorting coke in the bathroom. And Paris Hilton. You just Hilton. wasted my weed. You just wasted my coke. I just lost my job. I just quit my job and that was my last batch. Blah, 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 whatever. And it, Paris Hilton is her usual self on screen where she just... Pulls up a dildo and says, You can either go out with me or have a date with Papa Smurf. And the cat just, like, sniffes it and the girl throws... She it throws kind of the funny. dildo on the ground and the cat is just like... That was kind of funny. It was also kind of cheesy, but it was kind of funny. <laughs> the cat going up to the dildo. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it's Paris Helton's character was, it was just a, a, she isn't a good actor. She sounds stupid and boring when she talks, and she hardly has any clothes on. And, I mean, she looks good enough, but I'm just saying, like... Would I sleep with Paris Helton if I had the chance? Um, you'd have to pay me a bunch of money to sleep with Paris Helton. I think that Paris Helton would say that about you. Come on, <laughs> it's Paris Hilton. Well, you know, honestly, Paris Hilton. She I wouldn't want to be. I wouldn't want to hang out with her. Was that Tommy Lee she slept with, or was that that was Anna Nicole Smith that slept with Tommy Lee? No, it was uh, Pamela Anderson. Slept with Tommy Lee. Anyway, Sorry. back on track here. Um, I'm just saying, Paris Hilton. Yes, you're hot. We get it. You're hot. You're so hot. But hot actresses and hot actors, and oh, they're a dime a dozen. I mean, when you're if you're going to be an actress, you got to be something a little bit more than hot, or you're just Whatever. It just gets old after a while. But basically, you know, the gist of that story is, I guess, what? Don't get too caught up looking for love, or you might miss out on having a good time. But if you also get caught up in having too much of a good time, you get burnt out, and you look like a slut. Yeah. There we go. Woohoo! Good lesson there. Also a little bit, you know, like, yeah, okay. 
So the sixth and final installment of this film is called The Little Things, and it's my second favorite. Big time. I have to say that this film was very... Uh, the credentials of somebody, it's quiet, and she says, the day I was going to kill myself, I rode the bus into work. And she ends up not killing herself because her car doesn't work. And yeah, she, the very opening scene is... Her trying to gas herself. Yeah, and then her car doesn't start... And she takes the bus to work, and and she's sort of this. She's narrating her life, where she's just. I pretty much cry when I go on a when I go on a break, and. Well, it's not quite that melodramatic. I mean, it's actually kind of sincere as far as she le legitimately. She has no friends. She doesn't have any family. She absolutely hates her job. Her boss treats her like crap. She's just one out of, um, you know, five hundred employees that work in this giant building. He doesn't even know her name. She goes to the bathroom and cries, like, and then so she, um, meets, she sees this guy that it, on her smoke break, then her lighter doesn't even work when she's trying to smoke, like, the whole day is just it's gone to shit, and she sees him standing on the ledge. This ready to jump off Mr. Fantastic. Man. Oh, yeah, it ended up being the Mr. Stretchy guy from Fantastic Four is the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember his name. If you guys remember, leave a comment down below and say who his name is. His, his name isn't, uh, his name isn't Gary Hawes, is it? I don't know. Maybe it is. But anyway, um, he, uh, his name is Simon, and so she walks over to him and kind of starts talking to him, and uh, this is not the first time that he's he's actually thought about killing himself or attempted to kill himself, and what was kind of funny is she was like, well, you're not really going to do this, right? And he was like, what makes you say that? And she said, well, we're only two stories up, so you just break your legs, probably. Yeah, but, <laughs> but here's the deal. My, in my, my philosophy, there's different ways of diving off a building. And one philosophy is diving like you're diving off into a pool. And I learned this from the Eyebar Friday, guys. When you are jumping off a billion, don't be an idiot and just go, ah! <laughs> just hit the concrete. Own it, man. And you decided to jump. Own it. Own it. And hit, just hit the ground. Just fall like this. Like a G. <laughs> fall like a G. And, if, and, and when, <laughs> at the minute, as soon as you're like, about to hit the concrete, you can go, ah! And then... Boom. But don't act like an idiot and start flapping your idiot, flapping yourself <laughs> like a bird. Don't, don't fall like you regretted jumping. Just do it. Because you did it and you can't take it back. <laughs> yeah. So if you think about killing yourself, just make a little note. Don't flap your arms. Don't kill no. yourself, please. That, we're not, we're I'm not just joking. I'm not nearly that insensitive. Mm -hmm. If you actually are thinking about killing yourself, then that would be really sad. Mm, felt. It would be, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway. That was awkward. <laughs> So, Bonner. he doesn't jump, and they eat, They go downstairs and quit their jobs together. Then and they, they get on the bus together. They don't, actually, the boss doesn't really care. He just the boss like, doesn't care. He's just like, okay. Because they're just day. two peons in the midst of hundreds of other peons in oh. some New York. And the fact is this guy takes the credit because the girl did the report. Remember in the previous scene? He's like, Can I, have, I heard uh, my, my, my other employee gave you a report that he's supposed to be doing, but you're doing it. And he right. gives credit to the guy when he didn't do it, but the guy knew it. And I would have been like, you know what, you no good prick. I did that report. And she oh, wasn't in the room to hear him say that. No, Actually, and then he repeated that. Him. He repeated that as they were leaving. Well, it was just more evidence to what a prick her boss really was. And he is a total pit prick. But they're sitting at the bus stop together. This girl Claire and the guy Simon, and they start, and she reaches over and holds his hand, and she says, uh, the last thing she says was, "This morning I woke up thinking it was the end, but it really ended up being the beginning." And then they pretty much are going to fall in love, and and I thought that was kind of nice. Yeah. I mean, maybe impractical, you know? Yeah, I, life doesn't usually work out that way, but sometimes it does. There's like a gazillion different possibilities, and that's one situation that could happen, and it was kind of nice. But basically, the sum up this movie, break, what is it, Breaking Down? Um, uh, American Breakdown. American Breakdown. It's kind of like the ideal of life and how things are thrown at us, and how things can happen suddenly, and you know, more of a dra d dramatic way of saying that this movie, it will trick you because it, it looks like a gangster yeah. film. It definitely isn't what it looks like. No, it doesn't. And I think if they had just 
made the cover a little bit different because when you look at this picture, you see um, mob bo uh, a mob boss that's running a city and a beautiful woman that might be in love with a uh, you know with with this main character. And then you see this guy, you know, he's kind of like a drug addict, and he's. I honestly think that this would have been better if there were instead of six different mini films if it if you took the all the concepts in each film and actually put it into one movie yes one movie where basically Steve Carell is a guy that is in the midst of he's a cop and of course he's dead or something like that the yeah. actor right here he's he's gone he's passed away now may he rest in peace he died in England I think actually may he rest in peace we but, could we could have like they could have somehow tied together you know people who are partying one of those girls that are partying thinks about committing suicide because she hates her job and then meets the guy who also and then there's there's you know these this this other guy who is poor or living in a you know whatever and they they all of those characters somehow know each other kind of film because to break it down into six mini films it really didn't get a very strong, very poignant message across in either in any of them. It's no. just a little bit on the artsy fartsy, almost just it's kind of mediocre, except for street pain, street of pain, because that was just really funny, hilarious, and really just funny. makes you. I think they stuck that in there, that movie, that little short story in there. It stands out. It's not like any of the other ones. No, it's not. Everything is like suicide and seems like uh, depressing. Or, yeah. But this one is just like funny, but at the same time they put a little sadness in there because the kid was bullied and Steve Carell loses. But I, it, even then it's like a funny way of saying, it, it, of saying, well, you know, even if you have a vendetta against somebody and they did you wrong, if you are looking for a chance to get back at them, maybe you shouldn't because it hurts even more to fail a second time. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what happened with him, but still, it was really funny still. But just a message from us, from the Uh-Oh Movie Reviewers, and we're going to end this episode uh, <laughs> with quarters. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> me and Crystal, are, we, we don't do the review a lot because Crystal's busy. Or I'm busy. Or I'm busy. <laughs> I love Crystal, um, but the thing is that we're gonna when we get the money and stuff like that. Me and Crystal are gonna start back up on doing uh oh movie reviews on newer movies, mm -hmm. and um, so we de I definitely I found this movie in my local grocery store, and I was like, I have to watch this film. Oh yeah, I would have bought it for three bucks. Hell yeah, I would have bought it. I mean, here we got fucking Steve Carell, James Gandolfini. Uh, Josh Hartnett, Paris Hilton, and this guy who's, I think his name's Paul Walker, and I've seen him in films. I mean, for crying out loud, there was a lot of stars in this movie. A lot of stars, big stars. But as always, we're the uh oh movie review crew. Yes, we are. And we review it because we have nothing else better to do. do. <laughs>